Hello children, this is Oshini from Chinta.com. In this particular video, we will learn about transformation geometry. It's a very beautiful part of modern geometry. And um, we will also learn how to solve problems using transformation geometry. Some of the Olympiad problems or ISI CMI entrance problems have beautiful solutions when you use a geometric transformation. So I'm planning this as a multi-part series of videos. This is the first one. I hope you will enjoy it. If you are new to our channel, welcome. We offer beautiful programs on Math Olympiad, Physics Olympiad, Computer Science Olympiad and ISI CMI entrances. We also have wonderful research project opportunities for school and college students. Check the link in the description for more details. So what is a geometric transformation? In a very simple sense, it is a way of moving things. Okay, so let's see if we have a two-dimensional plane, XY coordinate plane. And let's say we have a little circle here. Now this particular circle, we can try to move it horizontally by three units. So it comes here, it moves horizontally by three units, three units. And what we just performed is called a geometric transformation. This particular transformation is known as translation. We will talk about the different types of geometric transformations. This is one example. There are other examples of geometric transformation could be rotation. Rotation is a very important geometric transformation. There is reflection and we also have inversion. Inversion is a very important geometric transformation. Many interesting problems can be solved using inversion. There are other types of geometric transformations, but let's now define what it precisely means when I say geometric transformation. So, here is a definition. A geometric transformation, a geometric transformation is a map, is a map, is a function, is a function. So whenever you talk about a function, you want to say from where to where, the domain and the range. So let's say we are only working with the geometry transformation of two-dimensional plane, that R2 to R2. R2 means the two-dimensional plane, R cross R. So from R2 to R2, it's a map. And then we can actually impose some conditions on it, such that the distance between the input points, if x1 and x2 are two input points, the distance between them, let's call this geometric transformation f. f is the name of the geometric transformation, it's a function. So the distance between the input points is equal to the distance between the output points. This is sometimes also known as isometry. I'm looking at a very specific type of geometric transformation. This one is called isometry. That means the function, the map, does not change the distance between points. Whatever the distance was initially, the distance is same after you perform the function. This is obviously not true for certain kinds of geometric transformations like inversion, like homothety. So the, this particular definition works really well for rotation, for reflection, and for translation. That is the distance between the input points is equal to the distance between the output points. I'll give you an example. Let's take this particular case of translation of a circle. Let's suppose we take 
two input points A and B. After you move the circle, then this point is F of A and this point is F of B. Now you can easily see and then you can also prove using coordinate geometry that this length the distance between the input points is equal to th this length, the distance between the output points. Here is a challenge question. Here is a challenge question. Suppose this particular circle's uh, center is small a comma small b. Then obviously this particular circle's um, center is a plus 3 comma b because we are translating it, moving it horizontally by three units. Then if you take two points on this particular circle, compute the distance between them, and then find out the distance between the output points. You can assume that the circles are of radius one. The radius is one. If you can solve this particular challenge, Please put it in the comment section. Every month we have a best commenter award. Last month it was for Mukunda Varadwaj. Let's see who gets it this month. So put a comment in the this uh, comment section if you know how to solve this problem. What is the problem? One more time. Compute the distance between the input points and then compute the distance between the output points and show that they are equal using coordinate geometry. Okay. So, we understand what this is, but the question is, are these two isometries inversion and homothety? I will explain what they are, but let me tell you right off the bat, if we are working in the Euclidean plane, then these two are actually not isometries. They do not preserve distances. Homothety is actually very simple to describe, so I will actually explain that with a simple picture. Let's say we have a triangle. We have a center of homothety, let's say a point O, and we, from the point O, we are actually blowing up the triangle and making it larger, proportionally. So, this point may go, maybe it went, goes here, this point probably goes here and this point probably goes here. So we have a triangle like this. And what happened is we have the small triangle which sort of blew up to become the bigger triangle. Now you can easily see that the distance of the input points A and B is not the same as the distance between the output, output points FA and FB. This is obviously, this side is longer, this side is shorter. So it is not preserved, the distance is not preserved. But here is a trick and I'm going to talk about this in a subsequent video that you can convert homothety into an isometry if you do something different. What is that? Well, in this particular case, in the Euclidean plane, we have the Euclidean formula of calculating the distance. What is the Euclidean formula? Well, the difference of x-coordinate whole square plus the difference of y-coordinate whole square and take the square root of that. This is sometimes known as the Pythagorean formula. This is the distance between x1, y1 and x2, y2. The trick is, if you change this function, if you change this formula to calculate distance, homothety and inversion will become isometries. And in fact, the type of distance formula that makes them isometries is more known as a hyperbolic distance formula. And it violates one of the fundamental axioms 
of Euclidean geometry known as the Playfair's axiom. What is the Playfair's axiom? If you have a line L and if you have a point P outside the line L, then you can draw only one line that is parallel to L through P. You have a line L, a point outside the line L. You can draw only one line through P that is parallel to L. This is known as the Playfair's axiom. Playfair's axiom. This is true in Euclidean geometry. However, if you change the distance formula and if you make homothety and inversion isometries, you rearrange the distance formula in such a way that homothety and inversion are isometries, that is distance preserving maps, then something very weird happens. The Playfair axiom gets violated. In fact, then you will have infinitely many lines parallel to a single line L passing through an external point P. Something really weird happens. And uh, in fact, part of my research during my PhD years was related to hyperbolicity. So I love this part of the subject. Anyway, we will talk about this later when we talk about inversion and homotheity. But for now, we will f f focus on the Euclidean isometries, which are translation. Translation is sometimes known as parallel shift. That is, you are just shifting an object in a certain direction. It may not be horizontal or vertical. It can be along a certain arrow. So maybe you had a box here. You move it in this direction, shift it here. That's also possible. It's called parallel shift. It, it's move, it moves parallel to a certain arrow, which is known as the direction vector. Then we have a rotation, which is very simple. You have a fixed point and the object is moved around that fixed point like this, such that the distance of each of the points on that object from that fixed point is preserved. So for example, if this, if this is a fixed point O and if this point is A on the object, if OA is 5 centimeters, now OA has been moved to F of A, so O to F of A is also 5 centimeters. So the way you move it is that you preserve the distance from a fixed point. That's what rotation is. And reflection, reflection is also very simple. You actually have a reference line or a point. It can be point reflection or a line reflection. If it's a reference line, which is called the mirror, then if you have, let's say, P here, an object, and if you reflect it, the output is like this. So the object distance from the mirror and the image distance from the mirror are equal. These are the three types of reflections, uh, three types of uh, isometries in the Euclidean plane. So we can solve very beautiful problems using isometries. This is sometimes known as transformation geometry. And I will give you one challenge problem, which is a very nice one. I will discuss more about it in the next video on transformation geometry. This problem is actually quite famous and you can solve easily using transformation geometry. Let's say you have any triangle ABC and if you draw an equilateral triangle A X C and A Y B. So that's an equilateral triangle. A X C is an equilateral triangle. So all these three sides are equal. A C is equal to A X is equal to X C. And A Y B is an equilateral triangle. That means A Y is equal to B Y is equal to A B. This is given. This is given data. What you have to show is that BX is equal to CY. BX, this line, is equal to CY. And I'll actually give you a hint. Since 
we know that rotation is an isometry, that is, it preserves distances. If we are able to rotate Bx about some point and put it on Cy, if we are able to rotate Bx about some point and put it on Cy, then those two will be equal because rotation preserves distances. Therefore, to show Bx is equal to Cy, all you need to do is to find a rotation that does the job. Now, what do I mean by find a rotation? So, you have to find actually two things. Number one, find the center of rotation, that is about which point you are rotating, the fixed point. And the second is find the angle of rotation. About that point, how much angle should you rotate? So here is the challenge too. It's a very simple problem. You just have to imagine this a little bit. We want to show Bx is equal to Cy. We want to show that using rotation. This can be done in other ways. But don't do it in other ways. Do it using rotation. Train your mind to rotate. Think about a point, center point and an angle of rotation such that this would work. Such that Bx falls exactly on Cy. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please uh, share and subscribe. Also comment with the challenge problem responses. If you are interested in outstanding programs in mathematical sciences or research, please join us. We have a wonderful community. Right now, we have about 700 students from all over the world. India, United States, UK, Australia, Singapore, everywhere. Very nice kids are working together. Check the link in the description for more detail. Thank you for joining us today. Bye. Take care.